Hello, hello, hello. Got your hankies out, okay. Might need them for two things, to cheer me on and to cry. Uh, <laughs> oh, Tim's got the whole box. Uh, just wanted to, my whole message was changed. Last night I started listening to, not listening, looking at my old narcissistic videos. Uh, I haven't, that's part of what I've been preaching on for many, many years, as you know. And I felt, um, I just want to see, you know, what I used to preach on, see if I, anyway, this morning I woke up and all of a sudden, right there on my feed was uh, a thing on narcissism. And so I listened to it and I thought, oh, and I, and I thought, I'm going to go, I went outside and did some yard work, came back and said, I'm going to listen to that again. And then I took notes on it. And I thought, well, that's just for me. It wouldn't leave. <laughs> Uh-oh, we're going to have to change the whole message up. I was all ready with one thing, and now we got to switch it. So I'm a little discombobulated because uh, I was planning on something else, but I've learned to go with the flow. Just go with the flow. So we'll see how this ends up. But I want to give you a quick boots on the grounds from Finland and Australia. Finland here, it says, uh, abuse is all over the country. Uh, the school children are having nightmares. That's why I say get your Kleenexes ready because of what they're seeing. The elderly people are asking what's going on in the world. We've never seen this before. Violence and lawlessness, basically. Then this one from Australia, and I'm only doing parts of it. We praise God for truth tellers like yourself who are brave enough to count the costs. And I just want to say for all of you that are out there telling truth, it's harder and harder these days. But I believe that we count the cost and God's going to reward us in his time, whatever that might be. And we're, we're called to love God and serve people. That's what my son always says. Mom, all I do want to do is love God and serve people. And really that's what our call is, to love God and to serve people. So in Australia here, um, she said the Victorian government closed their secondary school from ages 12 to 18. And they built a super school. In a larger town, it caters for 3,000 students in multi-level buildings called neighborhoods. Then they have toilets for boys, girls, and others. Some students believe they're dogs, bark and wear dog collars, and others believe they're cats and require litter trays. No words. Our Victorian education system is now the worst in Australia, and it's easy to see why. The local councils are now allowing drag queens to read to the toddlers and preschoolers in our libraries, which is creating confusion. This is Australia. It's creating confusion in our children and anger for many of the pe from many of the people in our community. And then, of course, there are bathrooms that are open to all. I have to be careful how I word this. And it says this will compromise the safety and privacy of women and children. And it's a facility here. She keeps talking about different things, but now the women are going to have to have someone stand guard just to use the facilities with dignity. And then she said, we're finding it hard to keep up with the rapid pace of the new laws our governments are introducing, our governments are introducing and remain positive. But they did tell a little joke in the end, I want to say it. She's, she, they like to always write me and put a little joke in there. I appreciate that. Hymns for over the people that are over 70s. It is well with my soul, but my knees sure hurt. Nobody knows the trouble I have seen. Just a slower walk with thee. Go tell it on the mountain, but speak up loudly. Blessed insurance. And their one and all-time favorite. Guide me, O oh Thou great Jehovah, because I forgot where I parked the car. <laughs> oh, it's cute. They always kind of have a little humor in the end of what they're going through. It's always laughter is good for the soul, right? Uh, I wanted to kind of start this off because I am going to go into some things about narcissism. And I believe this is on the rise. And there's so much I, I, I want to say. I just want to stick to my notes here for a second. One of the most difficult things in this life is the life of a leader, pastor, spiritual, whatever, whatever you call them, is to know that at some point the people they love will abandon or even betray them. 
I've been in ministry over 45 years, and I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot of abandonment, a lot of betrayal. Uh, first of all, preachers, leaders are human. They make mistakes. They do things wrong. They get into wrong doctrine. But thankfully, God does look at the heart. But going back to this, what it says that at some point, they know the people they love will abandon or even betray them. Many of them have sacrificed comforts, rest, and personal plans and personal needs to fulfill what they believe God has called them to do. Remember, they're human. Go through many attacks you'll never understand. They're discouraged. No one's ever happy. The sermon's too long, too short. The music's too loud, not good. It's really hard to please people, especially today. Now, I usually talk about false prophets, and I expose them a lot. But there is a side that Jeremiah 3.15, and he said, I will give you shepherds according to my own heart, according to my own heart, who shall lead them with knowledge and understanding. So there's a good side, and then there's the opposite side. And truth, sometimes we have to look at both sides of the coin. And there is a cult of personality which right now there's so many churches that are uh, being exposed. I, I'm not sure of this whole plan, but God's judging or if the enemy's just bringing down what he set up, which we tried to warn people for years about some of these churches and these leaders, uh, what they were doing to come out from among them. And so a lot of you people that listen to these channels and other discernment channels, you're aware, and you have been aware for a long time, but some people don't. And I wanted to read this uh, that I posted years ago, kind of to start this thing out, about the sheep and the goats. A shepherd allowed the sheep and goats to mingle together during the day, but at night he separated the sheep from the goats through his unique call. The sheep are gentle, easily led, submissive, yet persistent. In the face of danger, the adult males would surround the females and the young. The goats are pushy, self-sufficient, and headstrong. Goats have horns and are harmful. Goats have tempers and are quarrelsome. Goats rear and butt for dominance and want to lead, not follow. The goat represents a disobedient and undisciplined lifestyle. We are seeing who the sheep are and who the goats are. And isn't that the truth? And we just have to keep our eyes on the Lord as a lot of these things shake. And a lot of the people that people follow, uh, I remember when I started seeing a lot of this stuff, it was heartbreaking. The people you followed and thought were right on had another agenda. We won't get into that. But uh, another thing that I, I put on my page today was, and I'm not on Facebook much, but wheat bows, dies, and cloaks itself in readiness for harvest. And what's that like? The wheat, we're, we're supposed to be like wheat, that we humble ourselves, we pick up our cross, and we deny ourselves. So wheat bows, dies, and cloaks itself in readiness for the harvest. Tears do not. Tears are proud. Now, the scripture that I wanted to, to start off here with is John 6. <clears throat> so I want to get into a little seriousness here. And John 6... Read the whole thing if you can, but we'll, we'll just start here. Well, verse 63, let's start. It's the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing, but the words that I speak unto you, their spirit and their life. But there are some of you that believe not, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. So Jesus was betrayed. Many leaders are betrayed. Uh, we're, we're seeing betrayal, I believe, again. We're seeing people that, were well, you starting to see who's submissive, who's obedient, and, and we're starting to see rebellion, and we're starting to see, like Demas, those that have forsaken the Lord for the spirit of the world. 
And he said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. And what I want to say is there are some people that Jesus could not help. And there's going to be people you cannot help. There are going to be people that I cannot help. We have to stop helping people who don't want help. There's some people that don't want help. They have other agendas. They want to get in your social circle, circus, or circus, yeah, uh, social circle. They want to get into uh, who you are, what you, I mean, there's so many different agendas of why a lot of people go to church, right? Uh, but there's some people that just create a lot of drama. And if they're creating drama, you have to ask, you know, and everybody's going through things. This is a day that are so many people, everybody, we're all going through something, stuff we never thought we'd have to face and endure. But it's a time that we have to really see, are, are we surrounding ourselves with people that really love the Lord and want to serve people? Okay, so... I got this YouTube, and it says, um, this is what narcs expect after creating turmoil. And I'm not going to go into the, the name of it all. You can look it up if you want. But I'm only going to do some highlights because some of the things he says I'm not into sharing. But uh, when you're with situations and with people and you're trying to help them and they don't want help, you get to a certain point where they shut you off or they put up a wall. They call it stonewalling. They put up a brick wall. And then they start triangulation. Now in high school, I've seen a lot of this. That's why I kind of liked hanging around boys more than girls. The girls were all so immature and they wanted to talk about each other behind their back. And, but with this narcissistic spirit, there is a triangulation of where it's emotional manipulation and they turn people against each other. That's very wrong because relationships are very, very important. But what they do is they, they start shaming people, triangulating. Then they deny. If you try to confront them, they deny. They attack. And all of a sudden, you're the problem because you brought the problem. Now, all of a sudden, they're, uh, it, you know, they're the victim. They're just wonderful people that love to dramatize uh, how they're the victim. And they take no responsibility. And I'm saying this because I think we're seeing the rise of narcissism like I've been t teaching about for many, many years, but they take no responsibility and they don't change. We can't help people that don't want help. If people want help, we can be there, but some of us just don't know when to quit. You know, we just keep on, we just don't give up, we just take a lot of abuse, we keep thinking that things are going to change. Uh, and then the person that you're trying to help takes no responsibility. They're very problematic. There's things that are going on in their life, and they have a hard time looking at themselves, so they project, and it's always other people's problems. And then they want to be uh, credible. They always have to be the smartest person in the room. It's hard to tell them things because they know it all. I don't know if you've ever met anyone like that. But they expect you, and this is the part I want to focus on, they expect you to suppress your hurt. They expect you to suppress your anger. They expect you to uh, suppress your frustration. And this is abuse because people that are mercy motivated will do that. They will stuff. They will try to make it right. They will try to work with you. They'll try, and they are hurt. And these people seem to pick out those people that are long-suffering, that are very caring, and they bring torment and abuse to them and turmoil. It's a lot of turmoil. They expect you to help keep their public image unblemished. Uh, this is another thing that a lot of times people are doing things in secret, and they want you to keep your secrets. Now, as a a leader, whatever I've been for years, there's things you do not ever tell peop other people. It's confident. You've prayed about stuff. Um, this is something that's not to be, you know, shared with or whatever. But these kind of people know, and I've had more, I can't even tell you how many people I've had, that 
do this. They make you keep their secrets, but it makes you sick because keeping that secret affects you in a bad way and it's, it's harmful to you. I don't know if you understand what I mean, but it, you're keeping their secret is hurting you. Uh, and they expect you to let them stay in the dominant position. They like to lead, they like to manipulate, they, let, they like to control, and they want to be in control over you. So some of the lessons that I've learned and am still learning is that some people do not want to receive your help for whatever reasons. Many of them love their addictions to money. Uh, many leaders, pastors uh, abusing their sheep, they do not want to receive correction that they are using their ministry for personal gain or cash cow. They won't let that go. Once they've gotten the taste of money, Many leaders abuse the people underneath them. And I'm talking about their staff, and I'm talking about someone I know right now. There's a lot of abuse going on, and they can't seem to get out of it. But they're addicted to money. Others are addicted to drugs. They don't want to give it up. Uh, there's people that I know that married into an, an addiction, addicted guy, all I'll say was, and it's like, She's divorced now, but the trauma that she's went through because he wouldn't give up drugs. And also, people that love alcohol over their relationships. They've chosen which path they want to take. And at some point in time, you have to realize, I'm going to pray for them. God never gives up on them. Uh, it might be my exit time because I can't stand anymore to help them because helping them is hurting me. Helping them is hurting what I'm trying to do. Of course, they don't see it that way because they create turmoil. And because they live in a spirit of entitlement, they feel entitled for you to take whatever abuse they give you and not to say much. And they just basically just, can't we just move on? We're not going to deal with this. But then they don't move on. You end up stuck with all the other people around there, there's just so much chaos that comes. But you can always guarantee, if it's a narcissist, it's always going to be your fault. No matter how, and this is the part that I think is really sad and betrayal, no matter how much you try to help them, they flip it on you. And all of a sudden now, because you're trying to stand up and, and put some boundaries, you're the enemy now. And I've seen this over and over and over again. I'm to the point in my life, I'm tired of it. Are you guys tired of it? I'm tired of it. I'm tired of people using and abusing people when they're the abuser and then they all of a sudden turn, the, turn around and talk to your friends and try to turn your friends against you. You know what, that is a wrong spirit. And this is the thing I've seen throughout the years that I've been in ministry. And I'm not just one that's been in the ministry myself. Uh, I have aunts. I have uncles, I have cousins that are preachers. My whole dad's side, um, my dad kind of fell away from the wayside a little bit, but he came back. But all of his brothers and sisters are Christians. My grandma and grandma are strong Christians. My uncles, um, my brother, my son. We have a whole family history of ministry. And with that, where's my Kleenex now? I've seen a lot of abuse towards them and towards myself. I've seen people be really abusive. And as a leader, you can never complain. Uh, you, you have to get up every week and act like nothing's wrong. But they're human. And they hurt. And they have needs. If you have a friend or a minister that's good, that's a good one, take care of them, love them, because they're rare in this hour. And some of them don't have all their doctrines straight, but you know what? I don't know who does. I don't know anyone that's got all their acts together. But that doesn't mean that we are called to hate people. I mean, what's turning into Christianity now is, you know, we're hating this person and we hate that person. And it's just, it's an antichrist spirit and it's not of the Lord. And the other thing I've seen is that the enemy uses the weakest link. Sometimes someone you never expect would attack you is used. And why are they used? They've opened up the door 
there's a good way to have relationships and then there's a bad way. There's a good way to not be a part of someone's life. I remember when I had to leave a ministry, a big ministry, that uh, probably the biggest one, woman one in the world. I left because I started seeing things. I started seeing things behind the scene. I started seeing uh, a lot, but I didn't leave evil. I didn't attack. I didn't go on YouTube. I didn't go around and, and because I didn't want to give place to a spirit. But people, when they open up other doors, there's a spirit that, it, that attaches to them. I've seen it through the years that they become bullies. They become abusive. And there's just no place for that. I'm just like, how can you walk with the Lord and have the spirit on you, you know? And that's the thing with betrayal. I see this in, in so many people families right now that are divided. And this is what the enemy wants. He wants this political stuff to go into such division. You can't even be friends with people that disagree. Well, we just don't play. We just have to say, you know what, I'm out. I'm not playing this game. And that's how it is. It's just like, I'm not playing this narcissistic game. Um, and I felt like, I wasn't going to talk about it, but I feel like I feel it in the spirit realm. And it was just like, okay, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm not a quitter. And sometimes you, we have to just address things and just say, you know what? If people's secrets come out, not because you told them, because of other people's secrets, this is happening worldwide right now. We don't have to apologize for them. We're not the apologists. I used to always you know, try to make everyone get along and uh, this, you gotta like this one. And it's, like, it's like, no, you know what? If they don't like that person, uh, that's okay. You, you don't have to like that person. I'm kind of done with that, all that, because I don't have that big church stuff anymore. But um, it's just a time that we really have to know who is surrounding us. Who, who's back? Who's got your back? Who's back? Are you helping anyone? Are you serving people? Are you, you know, if someone comes to me and tries to attack me against someone, I don't listen to it. I have to critically think about that and say there's two sides to this story what is the other side because I've done counseling for years and I would sit with the wife and I was just like that jerk you know in my mind I'd never say nothing that jerk I'd leave him too and then the husband would come in and it's like oh my gosh you live with her totally different sides of the story and it's two different sides of the story it's just like i learned you can't take a side because sometimes you don't know you know and this person has truth that one has truth when you're hurt you have another a way of seeing things you become a drama queen or he becomes a, a bully and if you're a bully you need to repent there's no way that you should run around trying to intimidate people because you're so smart. There's so many bullies around in the name of the Lord right now. It's just like a nauseating. But anyway, I just wanted to share that kind of, that was just on my heart, uh, kind of short and simple, but we can't help everybody. There's people that you can't help. Uh, Jesus couldn't. You have to decide if people, you know, do they want help? Sometimes you have to realize, I can't fix people. I know we all love to fix people, and we can't control people. Try controlling your husband or your wife. You can't control them either. Why? Because they're not yours. They're God's, right? So we pray and we release people to the Lord, and we say, Lord, you know, they're yours. And thankfully, God can deliver people. Mark was telling me how he was delivered from drugs and alcohol, totally bound and many people were into this and that. And one of the things I loved to do was to deal with prostitutes when I was in my big church because they were honest. They were honest. You can't help people if they won't tell you the truth. If they keep a mask on and they're fake, and you can tell when they are. I don't know. They think they can't. You can't tell. I can always tell. This is like this. You know, it's just... It's, these prostitutes, they'd come to... I had three that I dealt with. And they would come to me and say, I blew it last night. This is what I did. And I didn't shame them. I didn't say, oh, you rotten. I just said, okay, you know, we're going to get back out. We're going to get to one of the girls. She said, I moved in with her rich boyfriend. And I said, okay, do you want me to help you? She goes, yeah. So she went and told him. She said, I want to move out. It's not, you know, I'm, I'm walking with the Lord now. He took all her clothes and threw it on the boulevard. 
And then I went and talked to him, and he, he understood that she wasn't rejecting him, but she was trying to walk with the Lord. So, I mean, there's consequences when you want to, and we could help those people. And there's people you can, and then there's people you can't. So, I don't know, I guess my lesson is when you know sometimes that people aren't going to change, you can love them, but you have to make sure if it's a spirit that's out. See, I have to guard my own heart because of what I'm doing. The enemy always wants to get me discouraged. Put people around that are going to attack you. And I haven't had it. I'll go for a year, two years, maybe five years, and I won't have anything. And then all of a sudden, here's that same spirit using someone else. But now it's like, okay, this time I had friends around me. They were like, this is what this is. I was like, yes. I don't know exactly what to call it, but God knows what it is. Spirit of pride, spirit of division, manipulation, all of the other things. It's the same spirit that just keeps coming to try to discourage people, discourage one another. So I just want to encourage you, if there's some people you can't help, if they walk away from you, and they walk away, usually they walk away, you have to let them go and just say, Lord, they're in your hands. I trust you. You know, I love them as much as I can. I love them, but I'm tired of this game. And that's what it becomes. They become a game. They're going to test you. Do you ever had anyone test you? Test your boundaries. I know you said no, but I'm just going to see. I had one son like that. He just stuck on my last nerve, just testing me, testing me. I don't know, maybe you had one of those kids too. But anyway, Father, we pray. We pray for all of us. We know people are going through things. People are hurting. Many people are turning to different substance abuse. People are trying to cope any way they can. But we pray for those that are being narcissistically abused. And Lord, I just pray that they would get help. They would talk to someone, that they'd know that they're not in this alone, that they don't have to keep trying to help someone that won't help themselves. So give us all wisdom, give us boldness, give us courage to put up proper boundaries, but keep our hearts right that we can still love people and that we don't give up on people even though they're going through things. We keep our heart right, but we know we're in a war. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's, it's people the enemy finds an open door and he attacks through. Help us not be those people that attack other people. Help us guard our hearts that we don't attack and we don't abuse, and that we don't uh, neglect and use people. In your name we pray. Everyone said? Amen. To watch Roberta's messages, you can see her on YouTube at Roberta Morrison. Roberta Morrison 2, the backup channel. Living in His Presence Church on Rumble. Living in His Presence Church on BitChute. And at the livinginhispresence.org website, where you can see all the messages and download them as free audio MP3s. If you would like to contribute to this ministry, go to the main webpage, and on the top right is a Give button. Thank you, and see you next time.